We're in the Lake Ayasi Basin in northern Tanzania. This region is home to over 120 different tribes, some of which we have met already. Today, we are meeting the Datoga tribe, famous for their blacksmith abilities. We've already encountered them before. When hunting with the Hadzabi hunter-gatherer tribe, we saw the Datoga's cattle and donkeys and how their appearance made hunting challenging for the Hadzabi as they scared away the wildlife, the Hadzabi's main source of food. I'm interested to learn more about the Datoga tribe and their relationship with the neighboring Hadzabi people. Our local guide Elias takes us to a Datoga village. Say you. Say you. Say you. Say you. Say you. Say you means hello. The Datoga tribe are originally from Sudan. When they first journeyed to Tanzania, they settled in the Serengeti and Gorongoro areas in the north. But they soon got into conflict with the resident Maasai tribe, who claim that all cattle belongs to them. They would steal the Datoga's cattle at any opportunity, which led to an all-out war. The Datoga people were no match for the fearsome Maasai warriors, and so fled the area, eventually finding refuge near Lake Ayasi, where there are no Maasai tribes. Their neighbours here, the Hudzabi, have no interest in their cattle. I start my visit by meeting some Datoga women. They are keen to let me try on their headdress. The only trouble is, my head is too big. Big head. <laughs> oh, cool. This is good. They then invite me into their house. This spacious building is primarily used as a kitchen. Here they brew local beer and grind maize three times per day. One of the ladies is about to show me how it's done. Now is my turn. They sing to motivate me to work hard. And sure enough, their beautiful song does help me get into the swing of things. It's now time to see the Datoga's blacksmith abilities in action. This is where the magic happens. The Datoga are highly skilled at making metal items such as knives, arrowheads and jewellery. They make them out of this, scrap metal. From this old padlock they will create a stunning bangle such as this. The men cut the padlock into pieces small enough to place in this metal tray. The Datoga then use this bellow made from goat skin to create fire. The fire is so intense that it will eventually melt the metal into a liquid. Whilst this man works the furnace this gentleman is hammering a piece of metal into the shape of an arrowhead. This piece of metal that he's shaping has already been smelted down by the furnace previously. The Datoga make much of their income from selling their metalwork and a big customer of theirs is in fact the Hudzabi tribe. This arrowhead that I'm watching being made will eventually be sold to a Hudzabi hunter. So, although the Datoga's cattle can sometimes disrupt a hunt for the Hudzabi, the Hudzabi at the same time rely on the Datoga for arrowheads and other goods such as tobacco. Their relationship is a lot more harmonious than I had previously thought. Whilst the two men work away on their projects, I admire some of the jewellery that they have previously crafted. They're beautiful. This lady dresses my arm in a number of stunning bracelets. It's Lewis's turn to get dressed up. The padlock has now been liquefied. It's taken out of the furnace, still ablaze, where it very quickly cools. It's now a brand new solid block of metal, ready to be shaped into a new item and given a new lease of life. It's placed in some water to cool down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, touch it. It's not hot anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got it. There it is. The metal isn't ready for shaping just yet. It will have to undergo three more days of smelting. Work on the arrowhead commences. He's sharpening the arrow to a point. Now it's time for some detailing. He very carefully carves barbs into the arrow. I recognise exactly which arrow he is making. This arrow is called... Oh gosh. And is used by the Hadzabi to catch challenging animals such as baboons and monkeys. We witness them use it to catch a white-tailed mongoose. The patience and accuracy required to make such an intricate object is really incredible. We have a moment to admire his creation before our time in the Datoga village draws to an end. It's time to get back on the road. This visit to the 
Datoga tribe was organized by Circe Safari Tours. If you'd like to book an experience like mine, click the link in the video description and pin comment. It gives you the opportunity to request a quote for your Tanzania trip from the very same companies that I used. Next time, we journey to the world famous Serengeti in order to witness one of the Earth's most jaw dropping natural spectacles, the Great Migration. I'll leave a link to this video here once it's complete.